When making travel plans, it might be difficult to decide between visiting a city's must-see prominent landmarks and learning about something that few tourists know about. Unknown spaces concealed in incredibly well-known locations happen to fall into a third type that meets both criteria simultaneously. If you know where to look, these hidden treasures can offer another level of discovery to must-see locations like Times Square or the Eiffel Tower. The tiniest police station in Britain. Inconspicuously tucked away near the southeast corner of Trafalgar Square, Britain's smallest police station holds the global record for being the smallest police station. Although its primary use was to house a single policeman, this tiny box can hold up to two detainees at once. Imagine it as a CCTV camera from the 1920s. Its construction is likewise quite shrouded in secrecy. It was built in 1926 so that the Metropolitan Police could keep an eye on the more disruptive demonstrators. A temporary police station outside the Trafalgar Square tube station was scheduled to be upgraded and made more durable after World War I. However, the idea was abandoned to build a less objectionable police box in response to public complaints. The place inside a decorative light fixture. After the light fixture was hollowed out, a set of small windows was added to it to allow a view of the central plaza. A direct phone line back to Scotland Yard was also constructed in case emergency assistance was required. In fact, the decorative light fixture at the top of the box began to flash whenever the police phone was picked up, warning any nearby on-duty policeman that danger was nearby. According to legend, Nelson's HMS Victory was the source of the decorative light that was first set in 1826 on top of the box. But in reality, it is a boot light created by Sir Goldsworthy Gurney. The Houses of Parliament and other locations in London now feature his design, an example of Sir Goldsworthy Gurney's Buddha light, which revolutionized lighting in the middle of the 19th century, is the light that is mounted on top of the police box in Trafalgar Square. The castle in Bude, Cornwall, where Gurney had settled, was where the Buddha light was created. Gurney observed that an extremely bright and intense light could be produced by adding oxygen to the flame's interior. In addition, mirrors allowed for the further reflection of this light. Gurney installed three boot lights, which replaced 280 candles, after being asked to upgrade the illumination in the House of Commons in 1839. The light was so effective that it was used in the chamber for 60 years before electricity eventually took its place. Along with lighting Trafalgar Square, the Buddha light was also utilized to illuminate Pall Mall. Gustav Eiffel's Secret Apartment Designer Gustav Eiffel basked in the praise when the Eiffel Tower in 1889 to acclaim and wonder, but as if that weren't enough, it was soon discovered that he had built himself a small apartment close to the top of the world wonder, earning him not only new fame, but also the envy of the Paris elite. Eiffel's private apartment, located on the tower's third floor, was compact yet comfortable. The apartment was said to be decorated in the modest manner beloved of scientists, as opposed to the steely industrial girders of the remainder of the skyscraper. To create a cozy ambience, approximately 1,000 feet in the air, the walls were covered in warm wallpaper, and the furnishings included soft chintzes, wooden cupboards, and even a grand piano. In addition, there were some lab spaces nearby the tiny flat furnished with the newest experimental tools. Weifel's comfortable little nest in the sky caught on, and high society in Paris simultaneously turned enviously green. There are rumors that the Eiffel has had several outrageous proposals to rent the area, even for just one night. He turned them all down in favor of using the room for introspection and hosting distinguished visitors, including Thomas Edison himself, who gave Eiffel one of his cutting-edge phonograph machines. The residence can now be seen through a window by guests who purchase a ticket to the top after being off-limits for years. Much of the furniture is still in place, and there are a few rather sad-looking mannequins of Edison and the Eiffel. A secret compartment in the statue of Leonardo da Vinci. The enormous monument of Leonardo da Vinci, unveiled on August 19, 1960, has welcomed travelers to Rome's Fiumicino Leonardo da Vinci Airport ever since. Over the years, countless millions of people have passed by it, 
but it wasn't until 2006 that a secret concealed inside the monument was found. Asin Pekov, a Bulgarian artist who immigrated to Italy during World War II, created the enormous bronze statue with a marble base. Pekov won the competition held by the city of Rome for a piece of art to be placed at Fiumicino Airport, and the ensuing 60-foot statue of the Renaissance Colossus wielding his renowned aerial screw design would become the artist's largest and most well-known piece. However, the statue required repair in 2006. One of the workmen came upon a peculiar object while doing this work, a little hatch that was about in the center of the statue, at the height of around 30 feet. Two parchments, still in pristine condition, were discovered inside the hatch after carefully opening it. One of the parchments, which was written in classical Latin, describes the ancient history of the region where the airport now stands as well as the landscape before humans arrived. The second parchment listed those who attended the unveiling, including Giulio Andriotti and Giovanni Granchi, who served as president of the Italian Republic in 1960, minister of defense in 1960, who would go on to become prime minister. Although Pykov is thought to have created the hatch and the parchments, it is unclear whether this is the case or why he did it, because he died in 1973. Verification of the data on the parchments is being done independently, even though few people are aware of the statue's secret. Occasionally, individuals can be seen gazing up and down at the statue with binoculars, much to the amazement of onlookers who are unaware that these odd individuals are hunting for the enigmatic hatch. The Secret Apartment at Radio City Music Hall more than 300 million people have marveled at the showplace of the nation since it first opened its doors in 1932. The golden palace of lavish curtains, gold leaf, bakelite accents, and exquisite murals that is Radio City was created by architect Edward Durrell Stone and interior designer Donald Desky. Theater mogul Samuel Roxy Rothafel has been given the task of emulating the structure's splendor on stage. Cole Porter's popular song from Anything Goes, You're the Top, even went so far as to add, Your Romance, You're the Steps of Russia, You're the Pants on a Roxy Usher. Roxy's nickname had come to stand for wealth, glitz, and entertainment. His Times Square movie theater, The Roxy, was dubbed the Cathedral of Motion Pictures before it was tragically destroyed in 1960. Roxy provided Radio City his special touch, resulting in exciting and innovative shows. He gave silent movies synchronized orchestral scores, and viewers rushed to what was then the biggest indoor theater in the world to watch the newest movies with his sparkling Rockettes dancers. Stone and Desky decided to offer Roxy a gift by lore and to express their gratitude for his abilities. He had a loft residence constructed for him in Radio City. Roxy hosted such notables as Olivia de Havilland, Samuel Gold Goldwyn, and Alfred Hitchcock while beautifully decorated in the Art Deco style, like the theater downstairs. Roxy's apartment was just as stunning as his grandiose theatrical performances below, with walls covered floor to ceiling in sumptuous curtains and 20-foot high ceilings coated in gold leaf. The flat remained vacant and abandoned after Roxy passed away in 1936, hidden far above the audiences he used to entertain. While no one now resides there, it is still in immaculate condition. Today, the Roxy Suite, formerly known as Roxy's Residence, can be rented for opulent occasions. Therefore, Radio City Music Hall has the ideal sparkling apartment, hidden away high above its renowned stage, for you to use the next time you wish to sip cocktails under the same golden ceiling that the leading lights of the 1930s did. The Little Compton Street Ruins That Were Buried Two tiled Victorian street names are embedded into the ground-level wall beneath the metal grate that covers the island. It is a seductive look into a long-forgotten route hidden beneath the present-day streets of London and bears the fading name of Little Compton Street. There is a traffic island at the intersection of Old Compton Street and Charing Cross Road in Soho. Little Compton Street, which runs between Greek and Crown Streets and connects Old and New Compton Streets, is depicted on maps from the 1790s. The height of the basements of modern buildings was the street level at that time. 
which was substantially lower. In what would have been a busy area of Soho, a bar named the Coach and Horses was located. All of it, however, came to a stop in 1896 when the region was destroyed to make way for the construction of the Charing Cross Road. Little Compton Street was relegated to history when the street level was raised and an office building was subsequently constructed there. When Charing Cross Road was built, Little Compton became a utility tunnel. Except for two completely preserved road signs, there are no remnants of this once secret London street. Under one of London's busiest streets is a long forgotten reminder of the city's former glory. Comment your views and subscribe for more.